Hey there, welcome back. Welcome to this week's podcast. This week, I want to talk about strengths and strength-based coaching. As a career strategist and a career coach, one of the things that I have found so impactful in helping clients achieve the results that they want is when they really understand their strengths and how to tap into them. I'm a Gallup trained strengths coach, and what's so interesting to me is throughout all my years back in corporate and media and agency land, companies would host a workshop and it would usually be led by an outside consultant who would take us through our strengths both individually and then as a team. And these workshops were always collaborative and fun, but they were always held on a Friday in the summer which gave most of us a feeling that this was a reward or a fun activity, but not something that we would be using deeply to revisit our ways of working and improving our performance as a team. Before the workshop, we'd all take our Gallup Strengths Assessment to know our top five, and we'd identify with them a bit, understand and, and agree with them and really say, yes, that's definitely a strength. But we also thought they were supposed to be used prescriptively, like, oh, these are my strengths. If I'm good at this, then I should do that. And they're really to be used directionally because once you know who you are, whether you show up in finance, healthcare, or advertising, it doesn't really matter as long as you know your strengths and it's your strengths and how you're going to approach a particular situation. Back to the workshops. Once we understood our strengths and identified with them a bit, We'd often laugh and throw an occasional eye roll when we looked at the blind spots in our strengths, the areas where they would be sometimes referred to as weaknesses, but we were never taught how to manage them or to know what to do with them. I mean, there's only so much that can be done in a half day session. And if a strengths-based culture is not embedded in your organization, then there's an enormous opportunity for you as an individual to learn it for yourself so that you can start showing up and amplifying your strengths. So often when we would do this work, the leader of our team or department would leave the room and go back to work. And then we'd be left with ourselves and the facilitator. And then trying to figure out how we're going to apply this, we'd have gaping holes and being not really sure in what we would do, then we'd go back to work on Monday with our list of strengths. And maybe some people would tack it on a cork board, but eventually we'd stuff them in a drawer because so many of us didn't understand what to do with our strengths within our required role sort or as a team. And without an engaged leader or manager who was all in, we certainly didn't know how to create positive change in our department by layering and leveraging all of our strengths. And we didn't know how to amplify them to create whatever goal we wanted to do within our own personal careers, which is why I have found strengths work to be so important to work, yes, on a group level, that's amazing when I do workshops, but understanding it on an individual level and how you get to show up as an individual leveraging your strengths and how you'll go about tackling a particular project or challenge is so helpful to increasing an individual's effectiveness and their confidence. And while everyone always had the best intention with doing these workshops, the exercises would fall short because we wouldn't know how to increase performance, productivity, or personal satisfaction. Through my own personal development and strengths exploration, I discovered the power of knowing our strengths and how we can amplify them in our current role, use them on our resume, correspondence, our LinkedIn and social media profiles. And if you have a personal brand or a business, they can also be used for your copy and your marketing efforts. Here's where strengths come from. Don Clifton is known as the father of strength psychology, and he's the inventor of Clifton Strengths, which is Gallup's assessment tool. He studied psychology and statistics at the university level, but he found that everything he learned was always focusing on what was wrong with people. So he set out to develop a framework for discovering what is right with people. And to me, that is incredibly refreshing. And he found that a person's weaknesses hardly ever improved, but their strengths developed infinitely. He studied why some people were successful and why others were not. And he discovered that there were 34 themes or strengths that allow you to access excellence. When I work with clients, we start by focusing on what they do well. And then we look at their beliefs, their feelings, their patterns of behavior. We identify 
them and then we develop strategies for how to apply them productively to achieve their goals. And a strength is defined as a natural talent. It's the skills you've acquired, the knowledge you possess, and the activities that you can provide consistent near perfect performance on. And according to Gallup, this is kind of crazy, there's a one in 33 million chance that someone will have the set, the same top five strengths in the same order that you do. One in 33 million. This means you are completely unique, my friend. Our differences are advantages when we develop them wisely. When you apply your unique thoughts, skills, talents, and knowledge to your strengths, you are going to be able to showcase your value and increase personal fulfillment. There's an interplay among your strengths. Think of it like you're an artist who has various tools or strengths, and you can use multiple tools to create the masterpiece that you want. I kind of like to think of myself as a strengths fortune teller or a strengths tarot reader. I see the connections and the uniqueness of someone's strengths and how they all come together. And I look at the blend of your personal strengths and I help you then look at your resume, your career path, and how you can tell a really impactful story. And one way to know your strengths is to take the Clifton 34 assessment, which you can get on the gallup.com website. It's about $50 and you can do the learning and put the application in for yourself. You can do this, all this study and you'll eventually get there. It's going to take a little bit more time because you're going to have to learn it all, but it's something you can totally do on your own. I will say though, that sometimes it's really hard to see your own magic. And as I like to say, it's hard to read the label from inside the jar. Another option is you can track your work your thoughts and your feelings over a period of time. This is usually at minimum of a week and at maximum a month. This looks like reviewing your calendar or reflecting on your day and asking yourself, what brought you energy today? When were you in the flow? When did time pass and you didn't even realize it? What made you feel happy or what seemed really easy for you? Make note of what drained you and what gave you energy. These tasks, activities, and accomplishments are not going to show up like a title or a job description. They're going to show up like things like speaking, writing, strategy, problem solving, building partnerships, sales. And if it's something like sales, I want you to dig deeper. What part of sales really had you in the flow? Was it the negotiation? Was it the close? Was it knowing that you have a solution for your client? You could also have skills like creating, building, which can be anything from architecture or construction to websites, analysis of financials, looking at customer service, where are you using innovation or technology? These are all general areas that you could also categorize as skills. And it's a great starting point for starting to understand your personal strengths. You don't have to be good at them yet but you wanna get clear and when you enjoy the work and what gave you energy. Alternatively, you could then work with someone like me. Knowing your strengths and leaning into them will make your day fly by because you're gonna be in the flow. You'll be confident and you'll know how to leverage your expertise and set and achieve goals. Being aware will enable you to authentically speak to your leadership with ease and answer interview questions effortlessly. You'll know how to create a compelling self review for 360 review season, and you'll be able to craft and tell your unique career story, ensuring all who hear it will know how remarkable you truly are. It's pretty awesome. And since I'm talking about strengths, it's also important to talk about weaknesses. You don't create a strength by investing in a weakness. Strength and weaknesses are not opposites. You, if you don't have a strength, it just means you don't have an innate talent in a particular area. It's not a big deal. If you have a weakness or something that gets in the way of your success, there may be incremental improvements. So for instance, you may not be highly analytical, but you can still learn how to read financial statements. You just may not have the same intuitive insight and understanding of them as someone who has an innate analytical talent. But it's important to know that the development time that you'll dedicate to understanding this is not going to turn this area into a legitimate strength for you. 
There could be incremental improvements, but it's not going to be a strength. This is a fundamental flaw with performance reviews. Someone is doing their job pretty well, but there's one area that they may be a little like meh or below average. And instead of helping them amplify their strengths or finding another way to up level, we insist on making them improve on the meh area to make it better. What usually happens is they get drained and stressed and then they get put on a performance review. Look, if you apply for a job as a copywriter and you're a terrible writer, that's going to be a problem that needs to be addressed so your performance can improve. But it may mean you need to be rotated to another role or managed out of the company. But if at the core you're doing a decent job, then it's insane to listen to them tell you how to be better. They can point out the areas you need to focus on, good grammar, better attention to detail, but unless you are confused and you've asked for help, if they start telling you exactly how to do it, I would caution you not to take it in. Seriously, that's like having someone tell you from their vantage point what you should do to improve your performance. And it's never going to work because you're not them. And I'm here to tell you to be professional, but don't let them get into your head. Ask questions, clarify, but don't spin yourself out about how to be better in their way of doing it. Even if it's with the best intentions, what they're really saying is that if you did the job more like me, things would be better. But it's not because you're not them and you can't do it their way. That's their way, not your way. And if you're a manager and you've been asked to provide feedback for someone, it's so much more helpful to share with the person your reaction. Something like, I was confused by what you were saying here or tell the person how you experience the performance, but do not help tell them how to do it differently if they don't ask. That's for the employee to think about and bring a solution to you versus you as a manager figuring out what they need to do differently, which is only based on how you would do something. There are areas where we absolutely need to improve in this and we can provide feedback, like you need to make sure you include this data in the report that's tactical and clear. But I'm talking about when we say to someone they should do it my way, unless it's a simple step-by-step process that's been proven tried and true and that's been part of the job and the role sort, then it's really just your opinion. If you're good at most parts of your job, can you imagine if you were encouraged to amplify your strengths versus improve your weaknesses? But we don't train managers to do this work. Typically, they are subject matter experts that they then get promoted up to lead. And from there, they're giving a few management and developmental classes, if they're lucky, and we expect them to know how to lead, motivate, and manage. But maybe they're better off based on their strengths to be an individual contributor. Not everyone knows how to manage to get the best out of a team. I'm hopeful that many of my clients come to me for this challenge. They want to be better leaders of their teams. And we look at their strengths and we figure out how they can leverage their strengths to tackle the task. It may mean stacking the department differently and empowering other team members to take on shared leadership roles. It's not a one size fits all solution. Let's say you're the leader of a marketing department. One way to look at it is like a game of chess, not checkers. In checkers, we expect everyone to do the same thing at their level in their role. And looking at the department more like a chess game is deploying an understanding when to bring in the power of someone's individual strengths and stacking all the players on the board in order to achieve the goal. Few managers have the time or the ability to identify what you're really good at and then setting both you and the department up for success. So this is where you knowing your strengths come in. If you're able to articulate what you're really good at, you're able to then help your manager understand how to best leverage your strengths, you've now created a winning situation. We can also make sure that more managers are trained in identifying and talent mapping strengths so that they're interested in knowing what you're really good at and removing barriers for you. Using your strengths decreases stress. It increases quality, productivity, and engagement in your work. People who use their strengths at work are three times more likely to have a good quality of life. 
They feel good about their contribution. They have a higher confidence. And according to Gallup, they're six times more engaged at work. Not using your strengths creates low self-confidence, confusion. Things seem hard. You're not in your flow. Your imagination decreases. Frustration and conflicts arise. And when we keep trying and striving for something that doesn't really work for us or could be identified as a weakness, we're probably going to feel a bit burnt out. There could be a loss of confidence and purposefulness, and you're probably tired, maybe even exhausted. If you believe your past is bigger and brighter than your future, you'll start to lose meaning and purpose. We create meaning through stories. Your personality is largely based on the meaning you give former experiences. Your strengths, your thoughts about your strengths, your values, your skills, your beliefs. We use this to create your career narrative and your future career narrative. Here's another tip. Look at your resume. Find two or three experiences that could be woven and retold to connect your strengths to your experiences. You start to draw out stories that really amplify your strengths and it'll help you tell your career narrative. And when you know your strengths, skills, and values, you will have clarity, direction, and increased confidence in your career. When you intentionally shape your beliefs and the career narrative you want, you get to build your identity and design the future you want. Whether you're looking for a new job or you want to create your own business, knowing how to leverage and amplify your strengths will help you find the right employer, the right clients and customers, and that you really understand what makes you unique and how you're wired so that you can create the big and bright future that you want. So who are you getting your help from? If you're looking for support, check out my website, jillgriffincoaching.com. I'd be honored to help you get to know your strengths so that you can amplify your career. All right, my friends, have a great week. I'll see you next time.